And today my topic is uh, 3D guided and odontics. Before I start, uh, this is the country where I belong to. It's a beautiful country, amazing. After this pandemic is over, do spare some time and visit us over here. As we know, whether it's field of automobile or it is even implantology, everything is changed after digital transformation. And the same thing is happening to endodontics. Going to basics, as I can see, many of the attendees are uh, either beginners or they are at the initial level of the practice. Uh, endodontics is a science where we are dealing with the pulpit tissue, what resides within the dentinal walls. And we are mainly concerned about the apical periodontitis. So anything that prevent our instruments going to the apex, we have to deal with it. When we talk about all this digitalization in endodontics, uh, usually our seminars are only limited up to digital apex locator, digitalization in endomotors, uh, digital radiographic technique, and different rotary file systems. But this webinar is just not about any apex locator or endomotors. We are going to cover the 3D printing aspect and the navigation part in endodontics. So with help of all the new tools and techniques in endodontics, now we can broadly point out that this new era is divided into three different treatment protocols. First one is static navigation. Second one is dynamic navigation, which is camera based system. And third one is dynamic navigation, which is based on virtual reality. For me, the most fascinating part is dynamic navigation when you can combine that with virtual reality. Uh, as uh, I've been introduced, I'm an academician as well. And so for me, digitalization has three important factors. The first reach is the clinical application of this digital technology. Second one, when we can do different research work so that we can improve our clinical protocols. And third one is the educational aspect. In preclinic area or in the post-graduation when students are still learning their initial cases of root canal. How can we make their life easier with help of this digital technology? So let's start with the first one, and that is virtual reality in endodontics. Just imagine when you are sitting in your preclinical area, and the first tooth that you are going to do your access opening, and you can actually enlarge the tooth size. You can actually evaluate the root canal anatomy out of the oral cavity amazing technology at the same time it also allows you to orient your micromotor or aerotor handpiece parallel to the long axis of the tooth so when actually you start drilling you know in which area you are going so that leads us to minimal invasive endodontics you can actually preserve that pericervical dentine in adjacent area even while you are doing shaping and just imagine how precise your shaping can be or your instrument separation when you are dealing with it Virtual reality is going to be the future. Uh, it's just a matter of time that when this technology comes in hands of clinician. At the same time, when we are talking about publication part. So within the last four years, when you compare the articles of static and dynamic navigation and odontics, graph goes completely high. And when you go through any article of 3D printing, three common words that you will find, rapidity, specificity, and accuracy. Whenever we try to combine technology with endodontics, we are looking at accurate, predictable, specific, and rapid outcome of the treatment. This evolution in digital dentistry started with evolution of CBCT. Along with that, intraoral scanners, 3D printing, and CAD CAM technology has played a very vital role. So in 2015, when I started my journey in guided endodontics, my first step was static guidance. Static guidance is 3D printed guide. And right now in 2020, uh, I'm working with dynamic navigation that is Navident. You can see in the bottom of your uh, desktop. Now, the concept of this guided technology has evolved in dentistry from implantology. Actually, this entire concept started with the most important vital organ of the body, and that is human brain. When neurologists were working with navigation, they were doing precise surgeries and for that, they had developed the concept of navigation, where they could localize their instrument. So from that neurology, the concept of navigation came to implantology. In implantology, the concept these days is prosthetic-driven implantology. And from that in endodontics, now we are doing 3D guided endodontics. In implantology, we always say that if you are going free head surgery, there's always a chance of trial and error. But in guided surgery, 
surgery, your drill will follow single plant trajectory. So in endodontics, when we are dealing with calcified canals, we try to use the same protocol where we have to establish a single plant trajectory and we just follow it. For the beginners, these are the steps how to start with the treatment. First one, obtaining surface scan or impression of the patient. If you're having any intraoral scanner, you can directly scan intraorally or you can have rubber based impression and then with help of extra scanner you can form an stl file step two getting cbct of the patient cbct is very important without cbct we cannot imagine 3d guided endodontics it is entirely based on this dicom data or the dicom file once you have your stl file and dicom file now you need a software that software will help you to superimpose this dicom data and stl file how to do that I'll explain you later. So first step STL file, second DICOM, third one superimposition. And now you have to plan your treatment. If you are going for implantology, try to orient your implant. If you are going for root canal, try to locate the canal. After that, you can form your guide, which is for implants or for endodontic treatment. Then you need to communicate. If it is a third party software, you need to communicate with the clinician if you are doing it for yourself just go through entire planning once again and then go for 3d printing and actually delivery of the implant and this is the protocol for endodontics so again cbct impression endoguide designing with 3d printed and then check stability intraorally and then you can use it directly so on the screen what you can see is actually one endodontic guide which has been customized for a patient when you are going endodontic guide designing there are a few things that you should be aware of as a clinician the first one is the type of endodontic guide broadly there are two type of endodontic guide one non-surgical endodontic guide which we are using mainly for management of calcified canals whether it is anterior tooth or posterior tooth the second type of endodontic guide are for the surgical guide where we are undergoing any surgery like episectomy or a few surgeons have tried auto transplantation in these surgeries we fabricate a surgical guide second there are few terminologies which you should be aware of one terminology is target point and second one is virtual drill path so actually what is target point if we say canal is calcified till the middle third of the root so that middle third of the root is your target point up to which point virtually on a software you want to plan your drill the next parameter is offset. Let's say I want to place a guide on a tooth, then I need to have a particular offset that is the distance between your guide and the tooth. Your offset cannot be zero or two less. If it is too less, it is difficult to place a guide on tooth. If it is too high, your guide will be inaccurate. Uh, usually we keep this offset at 1.5 millimeter. Second important aspect is use of sleeve for endodontic treatment. Because when we are going to plan endodontic treatment, uh, whether you have to use sleeveless approach or you are going to incorporate a sleeve in your designing. If you design a sleeve, what is the diameter of the sleeve? Because there should be no discrepancy between the drill diameter and the sleeve diameter. I'll come to that. So on this screen, you can see two type of sleeve. The first type of sleeve is directly incorporated into your guide. And in the bottom, what you can see are handhold sleeves. On the right hand side, there is offset of the guide. Wall thickness, the thickness of your guide is also very important. If your guide is too thin, it can break during the surgery. If it's too thick, it becomes inconvenient to the patient. Okay, another important part, virtual drill path. So in this particular case, when you are dealing with calcification up to the apical third, it is very important to draw a virtual path up to which area you want to drill. And we have two virtual paths on your screen. On left hand side, one virtual path which is going through the incisal edge. And on right hand side, virtual path which is going slightly from the palatal aspect. Yes, for aesthetic purpose, we have to make sure a virtual path is not going labially or incisally. We slightly keep it on the lingual or palatal aspect. Another important part for endodontics is CBCT. When you are going for CBCT, just conventional CBCT is not going to help you. For endodontic purpose, there are a few things which you have to keep in mind. The first of all, your radiograph should be taken in high definition. So whenever you take a CBCT, there is an option of high definition on, it should be available. 
Second, you should take seriously when patient has open mouth. You can ask a patient to bite on a cotton roll, ask a patient to bite on a bite plate, but always take radiograph with open mouth. It will help in segmentation of the CBCT. Third, but most important, field of view of your CBCT. Now for CBCT, there are different field of view. One is small. When your FOV is small, you can actually focus on the root canal anatomy. It will just cover a small part of the oral cavity, 2.5 centimeter by 2.5 centimeter or 2.5 by 5.5 centimeter, depending on the machine. If you're going for implantology, you are dealing with the broader structures then you can go with medium FOV. For TMJ, you require larger FOV. But for endodontics, there should be open mouth X-ray along with the small FOV. Now, what is the scope of all this 3D guided endodontics? So in my clinical practice, I've incorporated into management of calcified canals. Uh, we have carried out cases of episectomy. In literature, there are cases of autotransplantation of the teeth. For instrumented trival, it is still in experimental level. But the most important aspect is educational model and clinical simulations. Uh, let's start with the first approach, which is management of the calcified canal. For calcified canal, you'll find many terminology, which is root canal calcification, obliteration, and calcific metamorphosis. In any of the case, you know the etiology. It can be the traumatic factor, age of the patient, orthodontic treatment. It can be pulpotomy, pulp capping procedure. Usually, what do we do? Whenever you have a case of calcification, Usually we take our microscope, use ultrasonic tips with your experience. You try to remain in the center of the canal and deal with calcification. Many of you will use small size files. Scouting of the canal is very important, but guided endodontics can help you in this difficult cases. Now, what is the difficulty level with this calcification? If your canal is calcified, let me say there is a chance of perforation. It can be coronal perforation or strip perforation. There is chance of gouging of the canal. There is always a chance of ledge formation. So many errors that can happen with calcification. So why do you want to take the chance of ending up into trouble? When you know this difficult case, take a CBCT, plan your case in advance, and now we can take a guided approach. Now, many clinicians always ask, why to go for guided approach? Can't we just stick to the conventional things? Now you only tell me how many of you are still using Nokia 3310 or any old Nokia devices? Very few of you might be using it, right? Or maybe none of you? Because iPhone, uh, Samsung, Androids, they have taken over the technology to the next level. So when you have better technology, why to use the conventional one, right? And that's what happened with the Nokia. The CEO always said that we didn't do anything wrong, but somehow we lost. That might happen to you because conventional approach is good. But when you have technology, you should use it to minimize the chances of error. So what do we do? First thing, we use long neck drills. Second, a case of calcific metamorphosis where we can't see enter canal on the radiograph. First, go for CBCT. This is open mouth CBCT. If you have a closer look, you will see distance between maxillary and mandibular molars. Second, you have to decide the target point and virtual drill path. After deciding that, start drilling through it. And after drilling, we could easily scout the canal. The canal was scouted at the junction of the middle third and apical third. Another important aspect, taking multiple radiographs at the chair side. When you're going with 3D guided endodontics, there's always a chance of error. If your guide is not stable, your work might go into some other direction. You might end up drilling in different directions. So better to take multiple radiographs and make sure you are in the center of the canal. Now, another important aspect is how to localize a canal on CBCT. How can you localize canal on CBCT? The first thing, when you start with CBCT, always try to have a view in the multiple section. It can be axial view or the coronal view. And this view, you can try to have multiple directions. That is one law of centrality where we always try to locate canal in the center of the tooth. At the same time, on radiograph, your root canal will always be seen as a black radiolucent line. So just see whether you are finding it in the middle third, apical third, or it is not present at all. In either of case, you will remain in the center. Once you have your virtual drill path established in the center of the tooth, now you can take support from the adjacent teeth. 
Now we have our virtual path in position. After doing that, we will start superimposition of our STL file. So when you are superimposing your STL file, it is important to match landmarks on the hard tissue and the soft tissue. You can double check that whether the soft tissue superimposition is proper or it is incorrect. Because if it goes incorrect, it can lead to inaccurate drilling during your procedure. After doing that, now we have everything in place. We can convert this file for 3D printing and that will lead us to a 3D guide. So this is the 3D guide. Here what we have planned is a 3D guide with metallic sleeve. Now with few other companies, you can also plan this 3D guide without a sleeve. Now, if you are having a metallic slave, it's important that how you incorporate this metallic slave into the surgical template. So this is from the Seco company. In this particular thing, you can drill and make the space for your uh, sleeve. And then with help of handhold instrument, you can directly press this sleeve into the guide. Next one is, uh, sorry, I think there is some technical error with the videos. I'll try to keep it sh short. Second, with the calcified canals, there are two things. First one, target point, and second, virtual drill path. So in this particular image, what you can see, the red arrow, it is showing you the target point. The target point is in the apical third. Now, we are making a virtual path. After making virtual path, this is the design of the guide. After superimposition, the most important part. Okay, someone has asked me in a message, how to superimpose STL file on DICOM file. To superimpose DICOM file and STL file, we need to select different three to six point on CBCT and on the STL file. In this particular case, if you play, pay close attention, we have three different color balls. One is green, second, blue, third, orange. So if you are selecting upper right lateral incisor, at cemento enamel junction on CBCT, same should be marked on the cast or the STL file. That will help in superimposition. That's how you can do accurate superimposition. This is how you work clinically. Clinically, you can work with your high speed handpiece. It is always preferable to use low speed handpiece to avoid any friction or heat generation, but high speed handpiece are also very important. One very beautiful case of upper canine. Again, this red arrow, it shows the target point. This is the part where we have to plan our virtual drill. But this case, we have planned differently. So here, what you can see is Twingy system. This system is developed by Philip de Moyer, and it's amazing system where you do not require any of the metallic sleeve. There are two advantages. One, there is no metallic sleeve, so no chance of friction, no chances of any error. And second, it helps you to provide proper coolant during your walking. Right. And this is the area where we are going to place our handpiece. So this is how we place our endodontic handpiece inside, or you can place your micro motor. It will be held by these two ditches in your 3D printed guide after a bottom isolation. And again, very important area is a window. So here we have created one inspection window. While you are doing drilling inside, you can actually see whether it is parallel to long axis of the tooth or not. So again, it minimizes any chances of error during this process. That's how canals can be negotiated with small 10 number file. Another controversial aspect in endodontics is selective root canal retreatment. Um, now what is retreatment and selective retreatment? If we are dealing with maxillary molar and we say there are four canals present and tooth is infected, usual approach is entire retreatment. You again remove gutta purchase from all the four root canal systems. But when it goes to the surgical part in surgical endodontics, we do selective retreatment. We do not perform episectomy on all the four roots. Rather, we take a CBCT, evaluate if it is mesiobuccal root or a palatal root, and you just resect three millimeter of that particular root. So here in selective canal retreatment, we are doing non-surgical retreatment, but of a single root canal system. 
This 3D printing is very useful for selective canal retreatment. Over here, you can see a case of palatal canal retreatment where we have drilling into the palatal root canal and case has been managed efficiently. But when we are doing in posterior teeth, it's always difficult to work for posterior teeth. Again, over here, what you can see is inspection window, but I'm not still satisfied with the stability for the posterior teeth. And another important factor is interoclusal distance. So now I'll show you one video, one video, just enjoy it and let me know. Look carefully, there are a few mistakes which have been made in the first time. Now we are repeating it in slow motion and just check which mistakes are we making. Is the guide stable properly? Is there any water coolant that you can see in this video? Right. So first mistake, guide was not stabilized. Second, water cooling. Without water cooling, it can generate so much of heat. Right. So that's why when you have worked with 3D guide and endodontics, interoclusal distance is important. Uh, you need to place and hold your guide properly and at the same time use water coolant sufficiently. And that's how it works. Uh, for any other details on this 3D guide and endodontics, uh, we have a book which is going to be released in, uh, which is going to be published in September. We are working with University of Sharjah and this textbook of 3D guide and endodontics is from Springer Publishing House. So just watch out this space for this. and. We can also use it for the surgical cases. Surgical endodontics, what do we do in surgical endodontics? We try to remove three millimeter of the apical part of the root. So it is very important to take impression in such a way that entire vestibule has been covered. So on your screen, you will see two different photographs. One side vestibule is not covered. And on second side, you can see proper impression where vestibule is covered. So if you want to uh, have proper predictable abyssectomy, you need to have proper impression. So sometimes your conventional impression trays are not sufficient. You need to modify your impression tray or the best way is to use intraoral scanner and they will help you to record this area properly. This is the armamentarium, which are the bone drills, which we usually use for abyssectomy procedure on anterior teeth. On right hand side, you can three, see our 3D printed guide along with the drill. And that's how clinically, first you need to check the adaptation of 3D printed guide after that, reflect the conservative flap. We are going for papilla preservation flap. After doing that, this is how precise your apisectomy can be. And this precise apisectomy will allow you to have minimal invasive bone removal. But every technology has its own limitation. So when we are talking about 3D printing, the guides has its own limitation. The first one, in lack of interoclusal distance, you cannot use it. If you're working on a molar or premolar and interoclusal distance is less, this tool is of no use. Second, it's difficult to use high speed handpiece. So we have to rely on the low speed handpiece. It is time consuming because every clinician is not having 3D printers. So you have to rely on lab technician or a third party software for doing this job work for you. So it will take time in couriering and in this particular time, it's quite difficult. Fourth one, it is expensive. Because if you're dealing with two different canals, let's say it is a premolar and you have buccal and palatal, both canals are calcified, then you need to have two different surgical guides for that. You cannot just drill through both the canals through a single guide. So it is expensive. And third one, uh, it does not allow any change in the treatment plan. So to overcome that, now we have one of the technology which is called dynamic navigation. So what is dynamic navigation? Dynamic navigation is a promising technology. It is designed to provide a clinician a real-time navigation based on the CBCT of the patient. Now, what is real-time navigation? If you open a Google map and if you enter your destination, it will show you go, go right, go left, and you reach your destination. In the same way, if you have your target point feed into the software, 
it will show you exactly in which direction you should go. It will also advise you that clinician is going in the wrong direction. You should change your path of drilling. Chair side. So that's how we use it in endodontics. On this screen, the yellow line is the virtual drill path and green is actual drilling with the burr in real time. So now when we are drilling, you will see our green line is moving on the yellow line. This is an evident system where it will also show you to which depth you are going and which direction you have to stop. Amazing technology. So what is the advantage of this technique? First, you do not require any long drill neck burrs. You can work with your regular armamentarium. Second, we can use high-speed handpiece, high-speed drills. There's no need of 3D printing. A multiple drill path can be planned out. And it allows treatment changes to be made at the time of surgery. So if you feel that you need to change your virtual drill path, you can do it actually chair side. If you're doing implants and you feel that the bone consistency is not good, you can change your direction. But again, every technology has its own limitation. And for this technology, it is quite expensive. So we need to wait till this technology becomes available for everyone. It is flexible technology, predictable, safe. Um, it provides proper irrigation. Completely predictable treatments can be done with, with it. So the actual step during Navident is calibration, tracing, and registration. Um, as time is pressing, I'll show you quickly the video of this entire procedure. So this technology is press and press. First, we are doing planning on the software, then we'll do the tracing part, and then we will place our instrument inside the tooth. So first step, CBCT data. Second step, STL file. And now we are going for superimposition of the STL data and DICOM file. And how to do that? You need to select three to six different point, as I've explained earlier. And here you can see they are superimposed very nicely. Now we can start with the tracing. So what is tracing? When you have system in front of you, it has two different cameras and those cameras need to trace. So they will check in which direction your instrument, your hand is moving. So for that, for maxillary, this is a tracker. So before you start your surgery, your patient should be wearing this gadget. For mandible, there is one intraoral uh, intra tracker which can be placed with help of your glass anomaly cement or light curve composite. You can easily attach on the tooth. You need to calibrate your handpiece. If you're using micro motor or you are using round burr, that burr will be calibrated by the system. And after doing calibration, now we are doing for tracing. So now click close attention. While you're doing tracing, it will record different hundred points on the tooth surface. After doing this tracing procedure, now you can actually go for implant placement, root canal treatment, or uh, bone refination. Any of the treatment can be carried out if you have done your tracing perfectly. On your screen, what you can see right now is placement of zygomatic implant. Why am I showing zygomatic implant in 3D data endodontics? Just to make you realize if you can place 34 millimeter long zygomatic implant precisely, you can certainly drill 10 millimeter or 20 millimeter long calcified canal inside the tooth. This is again a workflow for you where you can scan the patient, immediately do planning, then you do tracing part, and then comes your drilling part. We'll have a video of maxillary central incisor, how this dynamic navigation actually works. When we are having a calcified canal, first thing we take a two dimensional x-ray, we feel canal is calcified, we go for CBCT scan. After taking CBCT scan, again, we need to have a virtual drill path. After establishing your virtual drill path, we attach jaw tracker on the patient. After securing it in place, now there is rule of isolation. So we'll apply our rubber dam isolation. And after rubber dam isolation, you can easily drill through this calcified canal and canal can be negotiated. Again, you need to take multiple radiograph. If you feel you're going slightly left or right, your planning is not proper, you can change it in the system itself. The same thing can be planned for the molar. Uh, usually, it is highly successful even in the upper second molars. Right. Again, this video, now I think you'll be able to appreciate the drill which is moving inside the tooth. 
So this is what real time navigation is. While we are working, our ergonomics is again very important. So clinicians are supposed to place this system in front of them. So while you're walking, actually you need to see in the computer screen, right? You're not watching intraorally. If any of you have used microscope, you'll know what I'm talking about. When you walk with microscope, your ergonomic is uh, in position, your back is straight, you're looking in the scope and not your bending inside. In the same way, while you're walking, you're looking at the computer screen and you're not looking inside. It's a learning curve which comes after doing at least 10 to 15 patients or uh, model work. And over here, what you can see are the stereoscopic camera of the system. This is the first implant of our state. Uh, I live in the state of Gujarat and the first dynamic implant which was placed. We have again cases of calcified canals done with this system, but I'm not showing you because they are still under publication. And uh, before they're published, it's uh, unethical to place it on the public platform. But again, talking from the scientific point of view, how can we compare the static guidance and dynamic guidance? So there are three points. First one, deviation at the entry point. Second one, epical deviation. And third one, angular deviation. So when we have compared freehand surgery with the static guided surgery and dynamic guided surgery, it has been stated that the static guided surgery and dynamic guided surgery, there is some deviation in the entry point. But both works precisely better than freehand surgery. So it's always good to use any of the mean. You can use static guidance or dynamic guidance, but it's always better than using the freehand surgery. Another important part is the angular deviation. In endodontics, it is very important at which angle are we going inside. In implants, if you are going with 9 degree or 10 degree angle, probably you can manage during prosthetic rehabilitation. But in endodontics, if you are making any error in angle of the drilling, you might perforate. it. So it is three times better than freehand surgery, whether it is static guidance or dynamic guidance. This is me. We have lectured for this at multiple universities and colleges. Uh, one of the European friend, Dr. Alfredo. Now the educational part. You will find many 3D printed teeth available in the market. Uh, we use 3D printed teeth for students these days in post graduation, they are using many of the studies on them. And you can also have 3D printed model for undergraduate student. If you want to explain external resorption, invasive cerv cervical resorption, not only students, sometimes in clinic as well, it will help your patient to understand their existing situation. But one thing that we always have to be careful about while using this technology is do not abuse radiographs. CBCT has to be taken as and only they are indicated. We always believe in the uh, law of Alara. We have to keep radiation as low as possible. Just for every case, you cannot go for CBCT. So uh, just go through these articles, American Association of Endodontic and uh, American Association of Oral Maxillofacial Radiology have given few guidelines that in which cases you'll be taking CBCT and which cases should be avoided for CBCT. But when you take CBCT, keep your FOV low so that the radiation dose is less, patient exposure is less, and so it is less hazardous to the patient. Second thing that we always advise, avoid any post-operative CBCT. So in these difficult times, be informed, be prepared, be smart, and be safe. Uh, again, for 3 d guided and endodontics, before I complete my session, I would like to say that when we look back at the history of endodontics, uh, Many clinicians have struggled to even uh, let go of the conventional radiograph and adopt new digital uh, radiographs in the practice. The same happened with digital impression system. It has been marked in market for last 10 years, but only now people are using them. So 3D guided endodontics, uh, the question is whether the clinician will adopt it. Certainly, that's not the question. The question is when. It is just a matter of time. And sooner the better, you should incorporate these things into your practice it will make your treatment plans more predictable. And nothing we do can change the past, but everything we do changes the future. So this is the time. This is the charity webinar. Go to our IDDA platform and contribute as much as you can. Thank you. For any queries, please uh, feel free to reach out to me.